Paris is the world's most visited capital city for very good reason. Despite everything that's been thrown its way, it's a place that continues to excite, to inspire, and quite simply to just put a spring in your step. You're in for a treat. From the city of love, we'll be heading south to the Bordeaux region to join the wonderful scenic diamond and cruise through some of the most gorgeous scenery the southwest of France has to offer. But our journey begins right here, in the city that has long been touted as the global center for fashion, culture and the arts. At its heart is one of the most famous monuments on the planet. I know the Eiffel Tower looks huge from a distance, mm -hmm. but when you are actually standing underneath it, it is truly big. Ah, it's big. <laughs> it's big. Now, how many tourists a year does it get? Uh, quite a lot. It's probably one of the most visited monuments here, yes. so between six and seven millions. Oh my goodness. So, how so on earth awesome. would you avoid the queues? Uh, there's always a way to avoid the queues. First, you need to book your tickets ahead online, buy it online. Yes. And second, if you're brave enough, you can climb the stairs. Take the stairs! There's no line for the stairs, never. There's and never a queue for the stairs, never, really? Never, People are not brave enough, I guess. Well, lucky for us, Sini booked ahead so we can skip the queue and head straight to the top. As well as a 360-degree view of the city below, the tower's three levels hold everything from restaurants to exhibitions. You know, today we celebrate and adore the Eiffel Tower. What was it like, though, when it was first built? It was not the greatest thing. At the beginning, people uh, were skeptical because thinking that metal is aesthetic is a pretty modern way of thinking. Back then, it was considered practical not mm. aesthetic. So at the beginning they didn't like it, but a lot of people changed their minds after seeing this. As you progress up the tower, the levels get narrower and the viewing platforms get smaller. But the views themselves, well, they're absolutely breathtaking. There is so much more about this city that will take your breath away. And when you are travelling with Scenic, the highlights just keep rolling on. I'm getting ready to ship me! Oh well, yeah, I'm excited, if you can't half tell. You see, there are a few things that you have to do when you go to Paris. You have to get your photo taken at the Eiffel Tower, that is a given. You have to eat way too many croissants, you know it's true. But you also have to go and see the ladies dancing at the Lido. It has been iconic since the 1940s and recently it's undergone a massive multi-million dollar makeover. So, let's see the ladies. It truly is a show unlike any other and I am so proud to say to you that there's four Aussie performers in the troupe, including this lovely Lecky Blonde. How does that feel when you get up there and you're, you know, you're, you're there? Uh, I think um, the best way to describe it is to imagine that you're another person, you know. Um, I have my day life here in Paris and then I come in here and I come to work and where these showgirl goddesses, these, you know, it's just a dream. I give my heart and my soul and I just want to, I just want to entertain. The Lido is on twice a night, seven days a week, and I am assured that every single performance is absolutely amazing. I think probably my most favorite also least favorite <laughs> at the same time would have to be the giant chandelier. So it comes out of the floor and we're attached by, uh, by, by belts and um, we're hooked on, we're hanging off of there. But this number, it's just breathtaking. There is a reason. 
Paris is one of the world's most visited capitals. It is both beautiful and fascinating, with a timeless familiarity, thanks to its famous landmarks. But while the icons are at the top of every tourist must-do list, if you sign up for Scenic's Paris with Parisian Tour, you will uncover some of the city's hidden treasures. Thank you for bringing me to the ultimate place to begin our walking tour. You're welcome. So you, do you know where we are now? Place de la Concorde. Exactly, Concorde Square, which is a very central square in Paris and used to be called the Louis XV Square. And I changed the name after the revolution because this is the very place where Marie Antoinette and Louis XVI were beheaded. It's with a local like Marie that you can find the secret spots where the Parisians hang out. There's no tourists. <laughs> 50 metres away. Exactly. The Tuileries Garden is between the Place de la Concorde and the Louvre, but there is none of the crowds Paris is known for. This is where the Parisians come to play. What should I not do when I'm here? How do oh. I fit in? Don't overdress. Don't dress too casually either. Uh, try to act like you're not a tourist. Don't walk around with your selfie stick. That's not a good sign, <laughs> good usually. Sign. And try to learn at least a little bit of French. Just basic words like merci, bonjour, ça va, je voudrais, s'il vous plaît. Simple things like that and it will help you already. Marie tells me the locals do still go to all the popular cafes, but they tend to grab takeaway and head straight to the park. Personally, any time I'm here, I gotta go to Angelina's. When I first came to Paris around about 21 years ago, I was given the advice, do one thing, go to Angelina's for a hot chocolate. It is famous for its hot chocolate. It's so thick. Now, I gather the French very proud of their pastries here. We are, we are, because I think we are due to the best pastries. Nothing is too heavy, nothing is too sweet. That's how you can recognize a good pastry from a bad one, in my opinion, because the point is for you to be able to eat another piece. Oh my gosh, look at that. Okay, here we go, you ready? Oh, I'm sorry, I'm not sharing this. <laughs> Once you arrive in Paris, you'll discover that its reputation as the city of style covers everything, from fashion to fragrances. You can smell the store before you even enter. You can. Javoy is a boutique-style perfumery with rare and exclusive fragrances from right around the world. Hello Katrina, coffee. you're welcome, my pleasure. Uh, nice to have you at Javoy. So how can I help you today? I want to treat myself yeah. to a perfume from Paris. Of course. I just don't know which one to choose. Uh, so what would you like to have? Do you like want to feel Parisian? Do you have like a Parisian smell? Oh, wow. uh, one of the typical Parisian smell is the gardenia. Oh. So maybe we can... I love gardenia. Perfect, we can have a look at the little selection. I tell you what, these Parisians have their personal scent down to an art form. It's really like a long dress uh, <laughs> lady walking through the Place Vendôme. Uh, it's really delicate and I'm elegant. I'm visualising this. I can yes. see it. You're painting a beautiful picture. <laughs> After a totally dreamy couple of days in Paris, it's time to bid this city of love au revoir and embark on our journey through the breathtaking region of Bordeaux. Scenic not only put us in the best hotels, but they transport us in true style. This here is the quickest and the comfiest way to get yourself right into the heart of Bordeaux City. The fast train TGV in France is so efficient, it's so wonderful, it is worthy of a shout out. Now, it used to take around about 
three hours to get from Paris to Bordeaux, but they introduced a new service and it now takes around two. It has been a total game changer for both the locals and us travellers alike. So by road, Paris to Bordeaux is around about 500 kilometres. But on board the TGV, a quick cuppa and a chin wag, and you are almost there. Now don't think for one second that because I have brought you to one of the world's most magnificent wine regions, we will only be sampling wine. Oh no, when it comes to Bordeaux, it is all about the lifestyle. Surveys have found that for most French, this is the city they would choose to live in. Even though it has this wonderful history, it's also got this buzz to it, probably because it's also a university town. They used to call it the Sleeping Beauty, but not anymore. This city is well and truly awake. Oh. <laughs> this port city on the Garonne River has bloomed into a historical treasure with more than half the city now UNESCO listed making it the largest urban World Heritage Site on Earth. You know what? It wasn't always so revered. So what was Bordeaux like over 20 years ago? Before everything, all the buildings were black. For pollution. pollution yes. And uh, you couldn't see the river, shabby warehouses everywhere. All along there? Yes. So it was really a different atmosphere, different energy. And it's mostly credited to the city's dynamic mayor, who led the charge for the city's revitalization. So he was and the one that cleaned it all up? Yes, and uh, he opened it again to the river, like it was in the 18th century, and uh, suddenly uh, all the restaurants, uh, all the life uh, woke up, mm -hmm. really. The beauty woke up. These days, the buzz of the waterfront is absolutely infectious. And right at the centre of the action is the city's water mirror, which at certain times of the day and without the crowd, works as a reflective pool. It can be very peaceful, I'm told. But at peak times, like now, families flock to this water playground all day long. You know what I love about Bordeaux? It's vibrant. It's actually officially now regarded as the second most beautiful city in France, behind Paris, of course. Oh, tell you what, Elizabeth, I don't know if it's the ducks or the flowers or the carousel, but I feel like I'm walking through a fairy tale. It is perfect. This is Bordeaux, really. I call it the lungs of the city. Just beautiful, all the green, the trees, the flowers. I like it very much. It's one of my favourite places. Created in the 1700s, the Jardin Public, translated simply as the Public Garden, is an 11 hectare green escape in the heart of the city. Ah, oh, it is so gorgeous. This pedestrian and bike friendly city is a breeze to get around. Not only that, there's a fast and efficient tram network, totally recommend it to get you from A to B. Our five-star floating hotel on the water is the Scenic Diamond, perfectly positioned on the city's promenade. It's just a sight to see. Not only does it provide a, a super luxurious place to rest your head, but you will also have your pick of the most delicious dinner options. Upstairs we have L'Amour, specialising in French cuisine. It is very social on board this boat. I will let you know now if you're travelling on your own like I am, you will make friends wherever you go. I love the fact that Jim and I, we've met tonight and Jim has not stopped, stopped talking from go to woe. <laughs> You'll have a ball on board. Bordeaux City itself is often regarded as a mini Paris with much of the beauty and architecture of the country's capital, but without the crowds and the traffic. And like most towns and cities in France, it won't take you long to wind up at the local boulangerie. So we've come to apparently the best baker in all of Bordeaux. Why would you choose to buy your bread here over a local supermarket? Okay. That's a good question. Actually, it is really simple. I have choice between chemical bread 
which is definitely cheaper or something more natural with tradition and crispy and easy to eat. This typical French bakery has more history than most, with a working oven that dates back to the 1700s. And while the pastries are absolutely mouth-watering, the bread itself is what keeps the locals coming back day after day. Oh, it's the absolute staple of the French diet. And why not when it tastes so darn good? Do you dip your bread into everything? Almost everything. <laughs> and with pasta, with pizza, with almost everything. And you mop, you mop the sauces up with your bread? No way I will let any drop on my plate. <laughs> Clearly the French love their food, and that makes the local market a daily ritual. As part of Scenic's program, you can actually choose to shop with the chef. The Capuchins Market. It's a chance to learn a little bit more about the French way of life, their cuisine, and of course their endless passion for food. Why do the French love their markets so much? I think the spirit of uh, French food is the best product in the beginning. We love to go into the market because we can share, we can talk first. It's a social place to talk with everybody. This local landmark dates back to 1749, while our next stop is a much more recent icon of the city, opened in 2016. No matter where you go in this city, you cannot help but notice this beacon of a building. It's called La Cité de Vin, and the mayor declared it the Guggenheim of wine. The building itself cost over $100 million to build, and the architects apparently designed it to look like a swirling glass of wine. I can see that. Let's go and check out the inside. the ground floor wine cellar, stocked with over 14,000 wines from right around the world, to the theatre, the auditorium, the tasting rooms, the library and a fully interactive exhibit that takes you on a journey through the world of wine. This is like a wine theme park and it's completely interactive. Really does smell like old gloves. To end the experience on a high, your entry ticket comes with a free glass of wine from the rooftop bar, with views right over the city and 4,000 glass bottles suspended from the ceiling. It is, well, it's like the rest of the building, an incredible space to absorb. You know, this is probably an unfair question yeah. to you, but how on earth to explain what you have in this building? It is so broad. Oh, what we have, uh, in fact, we wanted this to be, uh, well, I can tell you, like a beacon uh, in Bordeaux and a beacon in the, in the world of wine. And you want the people from everywhere in the world to discover that wine is a, a beautiful thing to share, but uh, a thing with a lot of history, a lot of arts behind, a lot of amusement, and we really wanted to put it all in a single building. From Bordeaux City, we are headed off on the Garonne River to see more of the sights of this beautiful region. And we're doing it in style on board the scenic diamond with all the bells and whistles and little added luxuries that you've come to expect from this company.